Have you ever seen a movie that's so bad that it's good? Anyone know the number to 911? Oh. <laughs> yeah, this isn't one of those. Welcome back to the channel. How are you getting on? If you're new here, subscribe and you'll get to see me say that every time you look at a new video. As far as I know, you can only hear that if you're subscribed. I haven't tested it yet. Welcome back to another edition of Why Do I Do This To Myself? This week, I watched Machine Gun Kelly's directorial debut, Good Morning, and it was not good. Now don't get me wrong, I love a good bad movie. Troll 2 is unironically one of my favourite films. And I've also seen a lot of great stoner comedies. This movie is neither of those things. Good Morning is the underdeveloped brainchild of Mod Sun and Machine Gun Kelly. Full disclosure, I had no idea who Mod Sun was before I made this video. I've googled him and I still don't know. This video has really shown me my own age. I know who Machine Gun Kelly is, and I know who Megan Fox is, and I know who Pete Davidson is. And that's it. So even though Mod Sun co-wrote and co-directed this whole movie, it's really Machine Gun Kelly's movie. So the movie opens on Machine Gun Kelly's character, London Clash. And before you say that's a silly name, he is played by a man who goes by the first name, Machine. Oh look, they listed Avril Lavigne in the opening credits. She must have a big part. So London wakes up to a couple of texts from his girlfriend, Apple. Her name is Apple, he's not dating a sentient Apple. Although that would be a better movie. London is scared that these are breakup texts because she spelled morning with a U. Whoa! First of all, I have looked at my own keyboard on my phone and my laptop a hundred times since watching this movie and I can't for the life of me figure out how her phone autocorrected morning to morning. Secondly, he has to Google what the word morning means. And this is essentially the entire plot of the movie. London is constantly trying to get in touch with Apple to talk to her, but wacky hijinks keep getting in the way. Since London can't get in touch with her, he decides to get ready for his day, and we get a beautiful narration exposition dump the entire time. If I haven't said it yet, my name is London Clash. I'm an actor on this show called Good Bad People. So they introduced this thing in London's shower called the flower shower, where you press a big button on the wall and a bunch of weed smoke will be vented into the shower. Get you high while you're getting ready for your day. Sounds pretty cool, right? It's never mentioned again. You are meant to be a stoner comedy and you introduce a shower that can get you high and you don't do anything with it. So that doesn't bode well for the rest of the movie. Next we're introduced to London's new assistant, Olive. And the movie weirdly tries to set up like this as a meet cute, like maybe these two are gonna end up together. They don't. It's, it's just another pointless thing put in the movie that doesn't go anywhere. Her character seems to only exist to remind the other characters what the next scene is supposed to be. Throughout the movie, London's character gives us a narration to introduce every character that we meet. Because you know that great movie making tip, tell, don't show. All right, this is Leo. This is Dylan. Meet Kennedy. This is Angel. Meet Maxine Goldberg. This is Fat Joe. It really seems like these guys just thought if they put a lot of shots in slow-mo in the movie, it would make it a better movie. It doesn't. It's goat milk. Goat milk? Where the fuck do you get goat milk from? I milked a goat. No, you didn't. You see what we're working with here? That genuinely might be the best joke in the movie. And that's just kind of sad. The only defining characteristics of every single one of London's friends in this movie are one, they are friends with London, and two, they smoke weed. There are four people playing the same character in this movie. Machine Gun Kelly and Mod Sun have said in interviews about this movie that to cast it, they just sent out calls and texts to everybody they know to see who was free. Maybe too many people responded. There's a lot of audio dubbing in this movie, and don't get me wrong, that's just normal for most movies. Maybe the audio wasn't great on the day you recorded. So you record the audio in studio, 
and just dub it over. In most movies though, they at least try to match up the audio with the person's mouth moving. There are multiple scenes in this movie where voices play over closed lips. Voices play over closed lips is my favourite Machine Gun Kelly album. I'm having a shitty day, man. London's chakras are all out of whack, so his friend Leo here decides to help realign them with his new music genre, Butter Trap. And in doing so, lights his own room on fire. And because of this, we are introduced to Megan Fox's character, Kennedy. Kennedy is another one of London's roommates, and she's recently moved out directly across the street from him. You moved into the house across the street? Hello, London. And that is her character development for this whole movie. This really feels like a YouTuber made movie. Do you know what I mean? Like, it really has airplane mode vibes. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. London finally gets a phone call from Apple, and just as he answers it, his phone gets destroyed by a water balloon thrown by Trippy Red. I don't know who he is either. I'm, I never said I was cool. That finale last night, seven days. Week. I do actually genuinely love that line though. I'm gonna unironically start saying this in real life. I would have been really interested to see this movie if they had have hired, you know, actors or writers or directors instead of just throwing a bunch of stuff together with their own friends. These guys are multi-millionaires. They have the money to hire professionals. But hey, at least they made a cutaway gag with Danny Trejo. Remember that time in the set of Good Bad People? Danny Trejo has arrived. He's our guest today on the show. He's playing a caveman. Just a reminder, he's full method. Wah! No. Danny, what's up, man? Dude, I am such a big fan. I'm so excited that you're doing this show. This is so tight. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> like family guy. <laughs> so while London's waiting for a new phone from his assistant, he decides to film a show reel for auditions. And it might be. The worst scene in the entire movie. This is my impersonation of Draco Malfoy looking for drugs. Where's the pot putter? You've already started it, haven't you? I just want him to play the viola. This scene is never easier <laughs> every time I have to watch it. I didn't have to do this. I didn't, I didn't have to do this. London gets his new phone, but he doesn't know Apple's phone number. So instead of, you know, like logging into Instagram or WhatsApp or Twitter or any other way he could get in touch with her, he decides to drive to her house instead. Because if he did anything else, the movie would end. Just as London is heading over to Apple's house, we're quickly introduced to another character, London Stalker. She's not going to be in the movie much. She's going to have one scene with him later on. And that's it. Since she isn't answering the door, the lads decide to break into her home. Very cool, guys. Not creepy at all. While they're sneaking around her house, one of his friends accidentally breaks an urn and ashes go everywhere. When he tries to put it back, he breaks every other urn. Does nobody else live here? So naturally, London doesn't want Apple to find out that he broke into her house and destroyed her family urns. So the lads take them all home. They decide to glue all the urns back together and to replace the ash, they decide to smoke so much weed. I am not joking when I say, I, I counted a solid 10 minute montage. 10 minutes of a 90 minute movie. More than one tenth of this movie is a montage of them smoking weed, and it is so boring. But hey, they got Snoop Dogg to voice a joint, so I mean, that's fun. Smoke me, smoke me, smoke me! So on top of the whole Apple fiasco, London's manager has somehow landed him a meeting with the director of the new Batman movie for the role of Batman, and he's supposed to meet the director today and he still hasn't even read the script. It's like he doesn't want the job. <laughs> this movie has really been marketed as this young actor's choice between true love and a career opportunity, when it's not really that at all. It's just a dumb guy and his friends 
smoking so much weed that they can't do anything for the day. London gets another phone call from Apple, but this time he's just too high to understand anything she's saying. We the audience get to hear that she's come home and has seen the place has been destroyed. So London's friends agree to break back into Apple's house to return the urns. Return of the urns is my favourite Mod Swan album. <laughs> I mean, Apple has already seen that the urns are missing and the shelf was destroyed. But I mean, don't worry about that because these guys didn't when they wrote it. So just as London shows up to his Batman meeting, he gets a phone call from his friends from Apple's house and they let him know that they just saw her leave with another man. London immediately leaves the meeting and drives back to her house. His friends explain that she had luggage with her, so she must be going to the airport. Don't know why he couldn't have said that on the phone, guys, but okay. <laughs> so London races to the airport that Apple usually uses, and because his friends don't want him to lose the Batman role, Leo decides to go to the meeting in his place wearing a mask. It doesn't go well. Damn, I love acting. I think I'm gonna shoot myself. And on top of this, some of his friends even get arrested. On his way to the airport, London calls the ground control crew of the airport. So he doesn't have the phone number for his girlfriend, but he knows the direct phone line for the ground crew at this airport. As soon as he arrives, London squares up with a guy who he thinks is sleeping with Apple and immediately gets knocked out. And the whole time, Dennis Rodman, you know, professional basketball player, not an actor, is filming the whole thing for Instagram. Thank you, Dennis Rodman. Oh, Great job. Hey, superstar, what's up, baby? You stay sleeping. Luckily, London's stalker has been following him all day, so she fixes him up with some stitches and drives him home. So what if we write a scene? where a glove compartment is full of gloves. Yeah, that's funny, man. Do you, do, you, do you think people will get the joke if we just put a bunch of gloves in there? Good point. We, we better... Um, we better have the characters explain the joke twice. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's one in the glove compartment. It's a lot of gloves. Well, yeah, silly. It's the glove compartment. After that glove compartment joke, I paused this movie and there was 52 minutes left. I don't have to do this. Nobody's forcing me to do this. <laughs> I'm forcing myself. So London Stalker drops him home and wouldn't you know it, Apple is there to see the whole thing. And because of this, she starts to think that he's cheating on her. This movie would have ended in five minutes if these two had just spoken to each other. Right after Apple leaves, London gets a phone call from his manager where she just berates him for his actions during the Batman meeting, which is fair. And on top of all this, he now has to convince Kennedy to help him get his friends out of jail. And once they're free, London sees on Instagram that Apple is at a party at YG's house. I don't know who he is either, I'm sorry. So the guys head over there, and this leads to what might be worse than the audition scene from earlier. It's a close tie. Before anyone is allowed in the party, they have to snort a line of ketamine. Am I allowed to say ketamine on YouTube? We then see them all go inside, where they meet a fake version of Drake, who also has a fake snake. And they riff on that for about five minutes. And when I say riff, I mean they just say the words fake, drake, and snake over and over again until the snake attacks one of them. And then this guy says this. God's plan. And that's a joke, I guess. But none of that scene even matters because it turns out it was just a shared hallucination for all of them. One of their friends has fallen into a K-hole so they bring him to Pete Davidson's character because he's renowned for being able to snap people out of bad trips. And bless him, Pete Davidson is trying in this movie. He keeps throwing out these really good riffs that are just falling flat because nobody else knows what to do with them. Hey, do you get your hair done at the mall? That's what, hey, hey, 
Not necessary, sir. I get mine done at the mall. If you ever want to come together, we could probably get a two for one. You know? Sick, dude. So Pete Davidson's character slaps their friend awake and everybody's fine. And as they're leaving, oh my god, it's Avril Lavigne. You know you're at Skater Boy about you. Is that it? That's that's all she's in the movie for? You 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 put her name in the in the opening credits. I suppose you put Dennis Rodman there as well, and that's all he's there for. So the guys all head to a diner so they can wallow in London's self-pity with him. Oh, and hey, look, the waitress is Brittany Ferlin from Vine. Do you remember her? My hamster Gigi just got period. Who knows the hamster gets her period? That's so weird, right? Maybe six seconds was already a bit much. So obviously London's not feeling great right now. He's lost his girlfriend, and he's lost the biggest opportunity of his life. And all this has happened in one day. But wouldn't you know it, just as he's at his lowest, Olive shows up to give him the good news. The Batman director saw him get knocked out on Dennis Rodman's Instagram, and from that video alone has decided to offer him the role. And on top of that, Apple immediately starts talking to him again and agrees to meet up with him. So they're both heading to their meetup spot, both while texting and driving, and presumably they're both still on Gediman. So that's fun and safe. And because of this, they plough into each other. So if... If they're... If they're both coming from the opposite direction to each other, and they're going to the same meetup spot... What? How? I don't know why I'm acting like it's my job to figure this out when these guys writing it didn't give a shit. So Apple and London both wake up in hospital and Apple finally gets to turn to him and say, Good morning. And that's the end of the movie. Right at the last minute, he gets the Batman role and he gets his girlfriend back. So he didn't learn anything. Oh, sorry, that's actually not the end of the movie. There's also an end credit scene where London or Machine Gun Kelly, I'm not sure who he is anymore, has the worst British accent and just complains about how bad this movie is. So you're telling me London class goes through all of this in the course of one day because of a text message with a typo. He's auditioning to become Batman. He gets high and sends his mate to the meeting and still gets the job. What is he? The luckiest in the world. I don't know how many people need to hear this. But just because you point out how bad your own movie is, that doesn't make it good. So what did we learn today? Because unless I'm mistaken, this movie was about nothing. Nobody learned or changed or grew as a person. London's still the same idiot he was at the start of the movie and he just happened to get everything he wanted right at the end. Maybe locking yourself into a movie where the whole plot is based off the poor misunderstanding of a text isn't the best route to go. But what do I know? I just go by my regular name. Maybe I should change my name to Semi-Automatic Deborah. Sad. <laughs> Look, all I know is if I was making a stoner movie and in the first five minutes I introduced the concept of a shower that can get you high, I might want to go back to it at some point in the movie. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Better yet, if it's, if it's legal for you to do weed, get as high as you can and watch this movie and tell me if it's any good. Maybe it's a masterpiece. I made the mistake of watching this sober. If you want more of my content, all my links will be in the description so you can find me there. I'm Graham Carey YT everywhere. That stands for YouTube, not Whitey. I'm gonna go try to recover from this movie. Bye. But hey, look, they got Snoop Jog to... Snoop Jog? <laughs>